is high drama all heart. Queen of Hearts is the latest erotic circus cabaret entertainment from company XIV in their wonderful theater cabaret space in Bushwick. It um, is inspired by Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. Director Austin McCormick envisions this classic as a delicious but somewhat scary dream. The White Rabbit enters Lady Alice's bedroom and cavorting along with him are a number of other rabbits and jockstraps <laughs> that lead her into this series of bizarre adventures where you find some of the same characters, the caterpillar, the dormouse, the queen of hearts, but they're rather changed in this very adult version. As always, there's wonderful dancing, great kind of hoops and hangings and other circus acts. It's what Cirque du Soleil would be if it were good and really beautiful. <laughs> so go to Brooklyn, have a great evening of cabaret entertainment. At 5090 59th Street is Two's a Crowd with a book by Rita Rudner and her husband Martin Bergman with music and lyrics by Jason Fetty. It's an inconsequential rom-com fluff, but it does give you an opportunity to see Rita Rudner. She's one of my favorite comedians. Inexplicably, Wendy and Tom end up in the same hotel room in Las Vegas during a huge poker tournament. He's there to play poker and she's there to shop. Both of them are trying to escape their problems and sorrows. Wish I could do the same. Naturally, they start out antagonistic, thaw out, and melt your heart. Kelly Holden Basher plays a kindly, nosy maid and helpful hotel manager, while Brian Lohman plays a variety of parts, including the person who brings room service and other surprise characters. The music is quite lively, but the lyrics are a bit puzzling. Jason Fetty appears on top of these stairs to sing solos now and then that really don't advance the plot, but they are very pleasant songs. Miss Rudner seemed a bit stiff in the beginning, but she warmed up as the plot plotted on to its inevitable conclusion, and there is no denying that she is a very gifted comedian. Robert Yakko is very appealing and has a strong singing voice. He added a more natural element. Martin Bergman had them facing the audience most of the time, which was a bit concerning. Kelly Holden Bashar and Brian Lohman in their assorted roles were a welcome distraction from the predictable, improbable plot. This is perfect lighthearted summer fare. I'm giving it a happy face minus. You've read my reviews. Now it's time to see me in person. My name is Jacob Goldbass and I'm a reviewer for High Drama. This week I saw Last Gasp at the Players Theater in Greenwich Village, just under Washington Square Park. Um, and it was directed by Dan De Niro and written by Jeff Smith. I thought the play was excellent. I gave it a da 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 happy face plus. Um, so full disclosure, I am also a writer for Dan De Niro's website, Theater is Easy. Um, I did think this show was excellent. Um, because it's a gas. It's, it was very funny and it was hilarious using a lot of situational humor. The story tells the plot of a technology company in San Francisco that makes uh, women's massagers and <laughs> the titular titillating technology um, makes for all kinds of uh, hijinks and uh, wild plot points. Um, I thought that the play could be more biting in its satire, um, and I think Jeff Smith needs to give it another go and, and write a second play or a third, uh, which can be mean and critical, uh, because this uh, play is just good fun and uh, life-affirming good humor. Uh, so happy face plus all the way. William J. Cataldi reviews Native Son from the acting company. It's based on the novel by Richard Wright, playwright Nambi E. Kelly, and director Sarah Scott. It concerns Bigger Thomas, who lives with his mother, brother, buddy, and sister in a rat-infested apartment in Chicago ghetto in the 1930s. He gets a job as a chauffeur for the Daltons, a wealthy white family who happened to own his apartment. And his downfall happens when he accidentally kills their daughter, Mary, um, and tries to cover it up. The um, 
character bigger is on the stage most of the time along with his alter ego this figure called the black rat and um, William felt that the two actors who perform them are really great the other characters in the play are mostly um, caricatures as sort of seen by bigger and the play itself really concerns how um, stereotypes of blacks and whites really determine how we function in society. He feels that although there's greater range for the stereotypes now, we still seem to be governed by pretty much the same things. He liked um, the direction very much, the acting. Um, he felt the last 20 minutes got um, could have been maybe tighter and clearer. He also thought the costumes looked like they were handmade for this production. So he really basically gives this a happy face. There's a lot more on Facebook. And also we should say that in rep they're doing the measure for measure and that review will also show up on Facebook. They've taken the movie Beetlejuice and turned it into a musical with Eddie Perfect doing the music and lyrics and the book is by Scott Brown and Anthony King. It's directed by my favorite Alex Timbers. And in this one, Alex Brightman, who was also in the movie musical of School of Rocks, is Beetlejuice. And he confronts the audience. He's sort of like the narrator and explains things and also lets us know what we're up to. And this is actually a, a very funny musical about death that actually makes you feel good. Now you've got this family moving into this mansion where the couple had just been killed by Beetlejuice and they're kind of stuck there and they didn't kill them. He didn't well he kinda no. well he knew they were gonna die. Okay. He he predicted their death. Mm -hmm. And he well, didn't do anything to stop it. He was kind of hoping that they would so that he could okay. he's trying to get someone to say his name three times so that he can become human again and wreak even more terror on everyone. And this family moves in with this girl whose mother just died, played by Sophia Ann Caruso, who is just the most brilliant young mm. actress. She was great in The Nether and Blackbird and everything I've ever seen her in. I just adore her. And I did get a chance to talk to her. I'll have that interview later at the Theater World Award. And uh, this, the, her father moves in with his mistress, Leslie Kreiser, who is hysterical. She is so funny. And, and so... Uh, the Beetlejuice connects with Sophia, you know, she's just, all she wants to do is see her mother. So she's perfectly happy to be in cahoots with Beetlejuice because she's hoping that'll get her her mother back from the dead. Yeah, the living people that surround her are so awful and she is very much in grieving for her mom so she's rather morbid and can easily deal with the dead more readily than the living. Um, I felt the movie was much, much stronger, but I really liked the performers and I liked the visual look, which takes a lot from the really cool visuals of the film. And that's and done by David Corrin, who I, did, who I talked to also. So again, if there's time, I'm going to throw in a bunch of interviews with all sorts of people. And again, Sophia Ann Caruso is just amazing. She's like a perfect powerhouse in a tiny package and really, really, really wins you over. And Leslie Kreitzer, oh my God. She's funny. No one, can, she can't do any more. And yes, they do have the Deo, they have mm -hmm. the snake. They have, I mean, it's just, it, I, it was like a, almost like an Edward Gorey story, yeah, I thought. It was entertaining, but somehow it seemed a little stodgy compared to the film, which is much quicker and sharper. Yes. But I still liked it. But I don't remember the movie very much. So to me, it was like just seeing a fresh story because I hadn't, and, and the thing is, I've just gone through a really bad death myself and this actually cheered me up. So really, the, I, this just, I love this and it's got some cool bits and pieces. I think it also over explains the girl and gives her so much more like um, psychology about the mother, which really is not in the original and I think weakens it by making it over explained and normalized. Uh, see, I did not feel that way at all. To me, it just felt absolutely perfect and wonderful, and I'm giving it a happy face plus. Mixed face. Plus. <laughs> Hades Town, with music, lyrics, and books by Anais Mitchell, retells the story of Orpheus and Eurydice 
in a new setting. Orpheus is like the first poet singer and Eurydice is the poor, um, in this case, young girl who's had a lot of worldly experience who falls in love with him. But since he's so concerned with inspiration for his poem and song, he doesn't really seem to be able to take care of her as well as she should. So she falls victim to the lord of the underworld, um, Hades, who's also um, has a love story of his own with Persephone, who he's brought down there for six months of the year. Um, the workers in Hades Town are kind of the oppressed, and they're building a wall. So it has overtones of critique of Trump and his wall. But it's really just a beautiful way of retelling a very sad story, but exhilarating us with its energy. And this production was first done downtown at New York Theatre Workshop, but has gotten bigger and better, especially with Andre de Shields Who as the narrator. finally got his Tony Award. I had no idea the poor man never oh. won a Tony Award. I mean, th and this has a real New Orleans feel to it, yes, too. Yes, the music is jazzy and wonderful. Yeah, and, and uh, Amber Gray, who plays Persephone, I mm. mean, she's just this alcoholic, loving life. She actually loves her husband, but, you know. Well, but she's a classic, depressed woman wife who's acting out through being alcoholic, but her energy is effective. Yeah, and Patrick yes. Page makes such a wonderful, smooth Hades. He has the deepest, sexiest voice, and you could see how, you know, Eurydice would fall for him, even though everybody knows she shouldn't. You mean Paris Well, Eurydice, uh, Eurydice also. She also falls She for does, him? yeah. That's why she ends up there. Oh, I thought he, yeah. he, you know, she ends up there because she's poor, she's tired of being and poor. And he seduces her. With the thought of a job and money and food and security. Well. The, I talked to her. This is okay. what, this is her explanation. I'm well, just, I mean, but I again, mean, what we see might be different than her explanation. I know, but this was her motivation. What's her character's motivation according to the character winner. Anyway, we, I will, I talked to He's a sexy devil, nevertheless. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> and I, I, there'll be a, Again, if there's time, I'm going to throw in lots of interviews from people from Hades Town as well. And also, we should say that Reeve Carney, who unfortunately was in that debacle of Spider-Man, which I like, but the rest of the world didn't. He was the Peter Parker. Here he gets to play this, you know, poet and a real meaty character. So and has a lovely voice. Yes. I mean, everyone in this was wonderful. The subject matter, everything. Yeah. This was just so well done. Yeah, it's one of those Rachel few... Chavkin, who directed uh, Natasha and Pierre, is so great with immersive Broadway mm -hmm. And it was better than the off-Broadway one. It's a reason it got all these awards. Yeah, because it's, it's really truly I mean, original look, and truly Mark and I great. are raving. How often do the two of us rave about so something? So I think everyone will love this. Uh, oh, so Shakespeare in the Park just concluded with Coriolanus, which closed August 11th. You can see our review on Facebook. But you still have one more free event coming up at Shakespeare in the Park, the usual public works. They're doing Hercules. And we're talking about the Disney Hercules with Alan Menken music, David Zippo lyrics, Christopher Diaz did the book, Chase Brock did the choreography, and Lyra de Bessina is directing it. This is when all these different communities then comes together to do the show. And this is Alfie's all-time favorite story. It's so much fun. It's just delightful. It, another kind of Hades mm. town going on here. Here we have, uh, we have Hades who is like, you know, trying to destroy Hercules. It's really wonderful. And another sort of warrior hero. <laughs> yes. So, yes, don't forget, go to Shakespeare the Park, see Hercules, August 31st to September 1st. And now for an interview with Reeb Carney, Eva Noble Zada from Hades Town. With Reeb Carney. And Eva Noble Zada. And you are in Hades Town. You are the young lover. Yes, we yes. are. Yes, she's younger than I am, though. <laughs> well, you don't age in hell, I guess. That's right. <laughs> I would have thought you That's would. That's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about your characters and all that good stuff. Well, I play Orpheus, uh, poet, musician, 
uh, touched by the gods, uh, and he is seeking to write a song that will bring the springtime back again. I play Hades, king of the underworld. Just kidding. I play Eurydice, and she is a survivor who falls in love. And you could have written Younger Than Springtime for her, although it's the wrong show. I played Lieutenant Joseph Cable in a production of South Pacific when I was 10 years old. Mm. It's funny you should say that. Oh, funny. Yeah. Oh, and uh, your character, you know, you, you, you're, so, you're a survivor, but then you end up thinking hell would be better than life. Why? Because she makes a decision. If you were hungry and someone was offering you food, would you say no? But isn't love supposed to be more important than food? I, I, I see your point. I see I, your point, but you have to have empathy for all of the characters and have your heart open to experience all of the stories intertwining. And that's I mean? one of the great things about Hades Sound. You, I feel empathy for every character when I watch, in, in rehearsals, when I'm able to watch certain parts. I think that's the goal. I mean, you, 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 you feel empathy even for a character like Hades. You, don't, you wouldn't particularly necessarily expect to feel empathy for her. When he sings a song like Why We Build the Wall, yeah. but you somehow feel empathy and understanding. And I think it's important to do that because we all are at risk of potentially going towards that in life if we don't feel empathy and understand how that could possibly happen. Understanding how it could happen allows you to prevent yourself from going there, I think. I don't know if it's empathy or maybe it is, but I end up liking all the characters. I mean, I, I absolutely adore, even Patrick Page, he's so, he's so evil, but he's so deliciously evil. And then you've got the, uh, um, oh, uh, Amber Gray, and she's like so a uh, force of nature. She really is. It's an honor to work with these incredible actors. And Andre the Shield, of course. The legend. Chris urges the Rolling Stones illustrates the danger of being gay in Uganda in 2010. The Rolling Stone is a newspaper that deliberately outs homosexuals so that they will be persecuted by the Christian populace. This form of the Christian religion was imported from the West and it preaches homophobia, which Demby's brother is preaching as a church leader. Demby is secretly having an affair with Sam, a Northern Irish doctor. Demby is in constant fear of what will do to the couple and his family if the rest of the village finds out the truth about him. The actors are so remarkable that they carry you away on a tide of emotion. It is until later that you see all the flaws in the play. Much more on Facebook, Happy Face Minus. The Share Show is closing on August 18th. Here is Michaela Diamond who plays Babe. Here we are, Liz. How are you? Michaela Diamond. I play Babe in the Share Show. Yes, you're young Share. I am young Share, baby Share. <laughs> And, and you got your share of talent, I must say. And congrats on the Theater World Award. What, what did you think when you got the new? Oh, it's such a fun award. My good friend Nick Barish actually won it a few years ago, so I knew of it. And it's just so exciting to be able to share it with the other award winners. I think it's so cool. We're all like budding and at the beginning of our careers. Um, it's really exciting to share it with them. And it's nice because you play the share we don't know too much about. Yeah. So we're most fascinated with you. So you haven't developed all the ticks yet. So we're getting pure, unadulterated share. Yeah, exactly. Or like you're seeing the beginning of all the ticks. You know what I mean? It's so, it's so fascinating to see her in her like most vulnerable, her most shy. She hasn't really even come into her body yet. It's really great. I love portraying that time in her life. And also you get to have conversations with your other two halves. So it's like you get to be like. It, 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 yeah, we really yeah, and ego, what that super ego. Yeah, yeah, we do. I, we get to be all parts of her, and that's kind of what we discovered along the way of this process. Is like Cher is and not an or. She's everything. She's not just leather jackets. She's leather jackets and a Bob Mackie gown. She can be both. It's really exciting. It's really, really exciting to to be able to sing this score. It. I, I'm surprised it hasn't gotten old, but it hasn't, which is great. And she doesn't get old either. She d apparently still kicking. What is happening? She's got a picture somewhere like Dorian Gray. She do I mean, how is that possible? Domenica Farraud's Rinse Repeat deals with how anorexia affects and is affected by an entire family. Rachel comes home for the weekend after being in a clinic for four months to treat her for almost dying from anorexia. 
The family is supposed to be with Rachel the whole entire weekend to make sure she eats the proper diet to get her body back in sync. Can they do this? Can Rachel stand up to her parents' hopes and dreams for her encounter with her own desires to be a poet? Is this family so broken it, including Rachel, can't be fixed? This was a very good family drama focusing on an issue that doesn't get enough attention. People are so obsessed with body image that they don't realize the harm they are doing their body to achieve so-called perfection. The only quibbles I have is that the brother seemed way older than 17, and ironically the food scene seemed fake. Were there really mashed potatoes in that pot? The mother got a bit too emotional at times for someone who was supposed to be always in control. I did like the fact that the characters had good and bad points and the actors were all quite terrific. So I'm giving this a happy face minus more on Facebook. And now at the Art of Critics Circle Awards, I talked to people from King Kong because that's closing this weekend as well. And Lucille Lortel Awards, I talked to Akko, who plays Anfisa in Moscow Time 6, and Paloma Young, who did the costume designer. And she also did the costumes for Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comments of 1812. And this is my wife, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne Hi, and, uh, and you got an Outer Critic Circle Award for what? For the sound design for King Kong. You did the sound design for King Kong? That's you! Oh my gosh! Wow! That roar! My, how, did you, how, how did you create those amazing sounds? It was so literally earth-shattering! Well, the amazing part about it is that it's done live every night through a system that we created. And the system allows a puppeteer performer to use a microphone not unlike this and actually create the sounds through a processing system that results in the, the earth-shattering, theater-shaking sound that you hear. So it's like an actor. You're never going to get the same performance. So you can see it again and again and again, and you never know what you're going to get. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's what's magical about it is Khan can play against the Andero on stage and always feel feel fresh and always feel new and organic and that's really what we were going for. As a sound designer, you must have been like a kid in the playground. Sorry, say again? You must have been like a kid in the playground sound design King Kong. Absolutely. You know, what's amazing about the show is that it gives sound a chance to really participate in telling the story and how we can help move the characters, move the arc of the story and create action and, and excitement as well. So it was, a, it was a real joy and a treat. Well, congrats to you. I'm talking to... Leanne Weiser. And uh, Jacob Williams. And you operate the Kong Puppet? Uh, yes, I'm the Associate Movement Director on Kong itself, and Jacob is the Kong Captain. Yeah. And there, there is about another 20 people involved in bringing Kong to life every night. Oh my gosh, I cry, see him twice, and I cry every time. How do you get the puppet to make all those emotions? It's, it's better than the actors on stage. I said it should get a Tony Award. Wow, that, yeah, tell the Tony people that. That'd be great. We'll take the Tony Award, yeah. But it is an extraordinary achievement, and, and it does take a huge amount of people to bring him to life and to make him look so lifelike, and we're very, very thankful for that. You guys must be awful strong because you also operate it like a regular puppet as well. That's, that is true. It takes a lot of strength. It takes a, lot, a, a huge amount of diverse talent. Yeah, and you know, when you have such a large amount of people to come together as one to create one being, it takes a lot of skill, a lot of patience, and a lot of work. So there's great... A lot of choreography. That's right. It's really wonderful to be honoured. Yeah. Well, congrats. Oh, everyone was so happy when, the, when the, we found out the Auto Critics was giving the, the puppet a, a recognition. We love that puppet. Absolutely. And I mean, we wouldn't be here without the extraordinary talents of the engineers and designers that made such a beautiful puppet. This is Akko, and you got nominated for lead actor in the play, actress in the play. And the play is God Said This. Yes, yes. So what's next for you? The next one is uh, at MCC Theater, uh, the, uh, Moscow, 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 by uh, Halle Pfeiffer, and directed by um, uh, 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 Tip, Tip Coleman. Yeah, I just talked to Paloma Young, who's doing your costume. Oh, uh, yeah? Good. So you're you're going to be dressed very nicely for this one. <laughs> no, I'm going to play Anfisa like a 80 some years old uh, old lady <laughs> and uh, it, you you'll see it it's so fun 
so funny. Uh, the Halley wrote in in uh, Three Sisters, based on Three Sisters. But it's actually it's word to word is a check of words, but it's a very updated millennium girl is talking, and it's so fun. Good. Chekhov should be funny, so I know, so it's being done properly. <laughs> yes, actually, yes, exactly. It's um, and, and the seagull as well. It's a, it's a comedy, they say, right? Yeah. yeah. So I hope everybody can come too. Oh, I can't work on now. Um, well, I'm working on another show at MCC, uh, which we call Moscow Time Six. Um, and that is also a very fun, crazy design. Uh, it's it's back to the Russians again. Yeah, exactly, the Russians. Um, it's been good to you. Yeah, I, I love a good Russian t story. Um, Paloma Young. Oh my God, I love your cosmic episodes. And longer reviews, Twitter, and you can see the show before Saturday on YouTube, Eva Heinemann. And the red asterisk is a parody production recommendation. And these are things that we recommended on the show. Life Sucks is hysterical. It's this parody of Uncle Vanya that's hilarious. Moscow Times Six is a parody of Three Sisters. Again, hilarious. I'm hoping to see Down to Eartha by Eartha Kitt. Last Chance to Share a Show in King Kong on Broadway. Uh, Broadway Bounty Hunter with Annie Golden is closing August 18th, and we're going on the 17th, so the review will be on the Facebook page. Alice Ripley has brought back the Pink Unicorn Mark, and I both like this very much. It's really good. There's Hercules, looking forward to it. And Parody Productions having a stage reading of Stop Motion. I have more interviews with Beetlejuice and Hades Town on our next show, August 31st. And lots going on, 54 Below, Scott Siegel's got his events. Karen Akers is back at um, the Beach Cafe. And 59 is 59 is summer shorts, and I'm hoping to catch them. They're these short little plays by really good playwrights, and they're always so good. Oh. Sorry, this new tripod is hard to be smooth. Um, theater for the New City's Free Street Theater is going on right now. Find out where it's playing in which borough. We'll talk about Little Gem on our next show. We're going to go see that. We're seeing all these other plays, too. A lot of closed shows to talk about. Don't forget to pick up your performing arts inside the cultural heartbeat of New York City. Next show, August 31st. 